If a coach is to analyze the video, he needs to be aware of everything that's going on. The better it is, the less people would actually notice it. If it works well, it's basically invisible. We just want people to watch a video and not think about the camera. When our customers recorded during very windy conditions, the footage would shake back and forth. You get seasick from watching it. This will affect thousands of games every month. And we saw that this was a place where we were lacking. And so the way the steady view algorithm works, it detects stationary objects in the video, so objects that don't move during the recording. It can be a house, it can be a tree, a street sign. Then it detects the same objects for all frames throughout the recording. Each frame is moved a little bit so that these objects are in the same position for all frames. It's made entirely as software, which means that we run it on all the videos that are recorded. And we use a feature matching algorithm to match features between different frames. So we have sets of feature pairs. So we have a pair of feature in one frame and the same feature in another frame. In the very beginning, we worked on only a small snippet of video, maybe 30 seconds to just stabilize that. And then after having that sorted out, we gradually work to make it work on longer and longer video segments until it now works for entire recordings. We found some open source libraries that can help with feature detection and description and feature matching. We used those for making a prototype, but we rewrote them and optimized them heavily. The implementations that we found were not fast enough. That took many months. It's an iterative process, making it work on longer segments of video, making it work on more videos. And if it only works for 99% of the videos, we will have 1% broken videos. And that's hundreds of customers who will not get the content they expected. While we were developing the software, it became gradually more complex. So to make sure we didn't break anything we already made, we make validation software on the side. Let's say we make something that works for the first 10 videos. We made record an 11th video, we see that it doesn't work, we need to adapt it to work for that one. But when we do that, we need to make sure it doesn't break all the 10 videos that were good in the first place. In this way, it's a bit similar to solving a Rubik's Cube. Because let's say you want to fix the yellow side. Then you turn something, but when you do that, you realize that you suddenly broke the red side that you already fixed in the past. Our use cases are very diverse. Some people record indoors, some people record during the night, some people record their dog running around in the garden. You might get uh, raindrops on the lens. And it's very difficult to find new features and update that. And another hard case could be when a ball hits the tripod, so the tripod actually moves because of the hit, then the camera is in a new position, so then we need to update everything. I think I'm most proud of how we made our validation software. This gives a solid foundation for making even better software in the future.